Hello and welcome to this, the second episode of IMTV, International Marxist Television. I'm Josh Holroyd, I'm a writer at Socialist.net, Socialist Appeal, and today join with me in our secret revolutionary bunker is Jorge Martin of the International Marxist Tendency, a regular writer at the website www.marxist.com and the International Secretary of the Hands Off Venezuela campaign. And this week we're going to be discussing Venezuela where at the weekend there will be elections on the 20th of May. Now, last year, you may remember, all over the world there were many images of uh, serious economic problems, demonstrations, rioting, and a huge amount of, of coverage, especially in the me uh, media over here in Britain. But, um, Jorge, you have really, you've been following the Bolivarian Revolution, the process in Venezuela, pretty much since the beginning of the revolution with the election of Hugo Chavez in 1998. So I think the first question that I would like to ask, and I imagine our, our viewers slash listeners would like to know about, is what is the Bolivarian Revolution and what has it achieved? Yes, the, the Bolivarian Revolution, as you said, started uh, more or less about 20 years ago, in 98, when Chávez was elected for the first time as president. And um, it, is, uh, it is a revolution. Uh, that means that it is the direct entry of the masses onto the scene of uh, history. There has been massive uh, upheaval, a very high degree of uh, political participation on the part of working people, the poor, the peasants who never participated before. And they basically taken the future into their own hands. That, that's what the revolution is. And as for what it has achieved, I would say that there are many gains of the revolution over these 20 years. Uh, too many to detail, but if there are maybe three that could be highlighted, I would say, which are also very relevant for us here in Britain. One is in the field of uh, education, where the revolution has massively expanded education, free of charge at all levels, from primary, secondary and higher education. The number of uh, students enrolled in university has gone up from 800,000 in 98 to about uh, 2.5 million now. Uh, and this is free of charge when over here we're paying uh, ever-increasing tuition fees. Uh, the massive expansion of uh, healthcare with the creation of uh, diagnostic centers and health clinics in the poor neighborhoods, in, the, in Caracas, in, the, in other cities. Uh, and maybe third, the, the, an attempt to solve the problem of housing, where, whereby the revolution in the last five or six years has built and delivered th now three million uh, new homes free of charge, uh, fully equipped for people who, who were excluded from the housing market uh, before. And uh, I, I think that these are very uh, important achievements that uh, demonstrate that it's possible to do things in a different way when your priorities are not the profit-making making motive of the few rich, but the general interests of the people, uh, of, of the people, the poor, the workers, the peasants, and so on. So I would say the revolution has achieved a lot. It's in a very difficult situation now, mm -hmm. but there are many very important uh, gains and also many important experiences of the people participating directly in politics, workers' control, in many state-owned uh, companies, factory occupations, uh, land occupations by different groups of peasants, the people organizing themselves in the neighborhoods, in the, in the main cities. And as you mentioned earlier, it sounds from some of what you were saying that there has been a, um, a retreat, if you like, in some of these gains. You mentioned that workers' control is, has been has dwindled to an extent. Um, and of course, many people would already be aware of some of the economic difficulties. And where do you think that fits in with the, the story of the revolution? Yeah, there's two things. All, always there was, for the, last, for, for the last 20 years of the Bolivarian Revolution, there has always been a conflict, a tension between the revolutionary initiative from below and the state apparatus that was trying to block that. And in most cases, Chávez played the role of uh, pushing the movement forward and then being pushed by the movement uh, himself. But uh, there was always, and Chávez recognized that, a bureaucracy, a layer of bureaucracy that would uh, sabotage and try to prevent the revolutionary initiative from, of the masses from, from uh, being put into, into place. And, and this has been there always, but it has had a bigger impact as the revolution has gone on, because people become demoralized or become skeptical if they see that what they want to fight for uh, is being blocked. 
uh, by bureaucrats who call themselves socialists or Bolivarian who dress in a red, red shirt. But at the end of the day, they, they are implementing uh, bureaucratic measures to prevent the workers from taking control. As, as, for, the economic, as for the economic crisis, it's, uh, we must say clearly that the situation in Venezuela right now is, is bad. It's very bad. There's been a very serious economic recession for the last four years or perhaps five years. Uh, massive contraction of the economy. And this has created many serious problems for the living conditions of working people. It has been accompanied by scarcity of basic food products, medicine, uh, hyperinflation, which has now reached le levels of hyperinflation. Uh, what kind of levels are we talking about? I mean, we're talking, for instance, the other day we were t I was talking to some Venezuelan comrades. We were trying to work out the increase in the price of uh, chicken. And uh, in one year, from May last year to May this year, Chicken has gone from, from a kilo of chicken has gone from 4,500 bolivars a kilo to 900,000 or a million, which is an inflation of 20,000% in one year. Of course, uh, wages have also gone up, but nowhere near the same levels. I mean, wages have gone up maybe by 1,600%. So that means that the purchasing power of wages in one year has lost about 90% of, of the purchasing power. But what's, I what's important to see is that uh, the bourgeois media over here, they will say, oh, that's because of socialism. Socialism has failed in Venezuela. The implementation of socialist policies have led to this economic disaster. When in fact, I will say it's precisely the opposite. Uh, what Chavez did and then Maduro continued was an attempt, in reality, if you boil down the policies to, to the core, was an attempt to regulate the capitalist economy, which is something you cannot uh, do. They, for instance, introduced price controls in order to uh, prevent inflation. They introduced uh, foreign exchange controls in order to prevent the flight of capital. And this never worked. The capitalists, as long as they own the means of production, the banks, the land, and so on, they always find a way to go around any regulations that you want to uh, introduce. So in reality, what has uh, not worked in Venezuela is, is not socialism, i.e. the state monopoly of uh, the economy and the democratic management of the economy and the benefit of the majority, but rather the fact that uh, too much of the economy was still left in private hands. And uh, the oligarchy, the capitalists, the bankers, the landowners used the ownership of the means of production, land and capital, to sabotage the revolution because they 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 fundamentally opposed to this uh, revolution so there's an element of deliberate conscious sabotage going on maduro himself uh, for some time now has been talking about an economic war yeah. and how much of a role do you think that plays is is this purely propaganda by maduro is it a real thing and to what extent is it driving the, the crisis there's there's clearly an economic uh, war o over many years there have been, for instance, uh, instances in which the police have entered or the National Guard have entered into warehouses belonging to private capitalists where food items that were not available in the market were stored in massive uh, amounts. Uh, but I will say that this is, this is part of, you, you can call it an economic war, it is deliberate uh, sabotage, but at the same time, if you are a capitalist, from a, from a purely capitalist point of view, if the government tells you you have to sell uh, maize flour or, or rice at this particular price, and you don't think you, you're making enough profit, then you, you simply won't sell it. Whether you'll sell it in the black market or you'll sell it abroad in Colombia where you can make a, a higher rate of profit. So in reality, it is economic war, but at the same time, it is the consequence of trying to regulate capitalism, which is something you cannot do. Capitalism is based on the freedom of the capitalist to uh, invest or not according to the profit uh, that, that they can make out of, of that. Uh, capitalism is not based on the interest of the general uh, public or the majority of the population. So that's another factor. And a third factor, I will say, is the fact that uh, Venezuela has been hit very hard by the economic uh, crisis of capitalism worldwide and the slowdown of the Chinese economy. So while before oil prices were very high for Venezuelan oil over $100 uh, a barrel, which they were around 2012, 2013, uh, and then they massively collapsed after 2014, uh, reaching a low level of $27 a barrel. They have now recovered slightly 
but still they are, they are much lower than at, the, at the peak. And obviously a country like Venezuela, which gets most of its uh, hard currency from the export of oil, then has been massively hit. The ability of the government to introduce, uh, to sell subsidized food products or to carry on with these social programs has been massively depleted. Foreign reserves have gone down. And so this is really the, the cause of the, of the crisis in Venezuela. The crisis is aggravated by a number of other factors, but the, the, the at the bottom of the crisis is the crisis of uh, world capitalism and its effects in a country that produces one single product for export. Talk about the opposition a bit, actually. Um, the way that they're presented, so speaking from Britain, the way that they're often presented on the BBC is as uh, democratic fighters who are facing up to a corrupt authoritarian regime, destroying the country's economy, and what they want is fair elections so that they can, um, you know, solve the problems in Venezuelan society. Yes. Well, Some of what you've told me suggests that, that, that that's perhaps an element of spin in that. What else do you think is relevant I to would say, the yeah, opposition here? I would say it's almost the opposite. Uh, in fact, the, uh, the, 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 the main section of the Venezuelan opposition are boycotting the presidential elections that are coming up this, this weekend uh, after spending one year demanding that these elections <laughs> take place. Uh, the elections were, were not supposed to take place this uh, early. They were supposed to take place l uh, later on because the, the term of office of Maduro hasn't, uh, hasn't uh, finished. But the opposition demanded the elections, early elections, we want elections for everything and this and that. And now that the elections are taking place, they're refusing to participate. And what that suggests to me is that they know they're going to lose these elections, like, like they've lost most of the elections over the last uh, 20 years, with two exceptions. Uh, the second thing is that if you look at the behavior of the opposition one year ago, if you look at their track record, is the track record of undemocratic coup plotting, oligarchic, U.S. Uh, imperialism-linked opposition. But if you look at the track record one year ago when there were the big protests, uh, the track record is uh, extremely uh, undemocratic. I mean, they, they uh, used uh, terrorist violence in these uh, uh, demonstra opposition demonstrations. They tried to overrun military base in the center of uh, Caracas. They used homemade uh, rocket launchers. Uh, and also, they had a very strong content of class hatred. Uh, most of the demonstrators, the protesters and the opposition supporters come from the upper class and middle class areas in the east of Caracas. And that's where the demonstrations were taking place. And for instance, there were two or three incidents in which people who looked uh, ch like Chavista supporters, maybe because they, were, they, they looked poor or dark skin, and they were set upon by the opposition protesters. In one case, one uh, person was uh, set on fire mm -hmm. and he could have uh, died from his uh, injuries just because he didn't look the right uh, shade of uh, skin color or because he was coming from a poor uh, neighborhood. So this is the real content of the Venezuelan uh, opposition. They said he thought they thought he was a thief. Yeah. Because obviously, Anyone who is from a poor neighborhood must be a thief, or anyone who supports the Chavez uh, revolution must be a, a thief. That's the way they uh, think. And they never reconcile themselves with the fact that they've lost all these elections all these, uh, all these years. Uh, they now control the National uh, Assembly. But if you look at the track record of the opposition-dominated National Assembly, the, uh, the legislation they attempted to uh, bring forward was uh, very undemocratic. For instance, they wanted to privatize the housing uh, schemes that the government had uh, created, uh, saying that people had the right to private uh, prop to the ownership of the home. But in reality, what this means, and we know this in this uh, country, will have been the, the privatization of uh, public housing uh, stock and a massive increase in uh, prices and the exclusion of people from the housing uh, market again. So this is the real character of the, of the opposition, an opposition that does not hesitate in demanding foreign military intervention. You, you see, uh, a week ago, Mike Pence, the vice president of the United States, made a big speech at the Organization of American States, and he was basically threatening with intervention. He used all the key coded words. Uh, Venezuela is a failed state in its uh, humanitarian intervention, is a tyranny, is a regime, and all those things. 
And then he said, uh, and there are a number of very uh, courageous uh, leaders of the opposition here, and they are also in favor of these uh, measures. And they've openly called for military intervention. We know that military intervention by the United States in any country of the world only creates destruction, chaos, and suffering for the population of that country. Uh, I'm still yet to see any US intervention that brings democracy anywhere in the world. These people, they don't hesitate in calling the United States to come and invade their own country with all the associated costs that that will uh, have, because they don't really care about the country, its people, or anything. The only, th the only thing they care is about their ownership over, over the natural resources and the wealth of this uh, country. This is the real character of the opposition in, in Venezuela. We should probably explain the situation currently, the political situation in Venezuela, is that you have a national assembly like a parliament, which from 2015 onwards, am I, from the end of 2015, is now majority opposition. Um, that's one of the very few elections that they actually recognize. The president is Nicolas Maduro, Maduro the successor to Hugo Chavez uh, of the PSUV, the Socialist Party, of United Socialist Party of Venezuela. Um, and then you also have, and this might confuse people, you also have a constituent assembly elected last year. In July. So what, what role has the constituent assembly played in this? Yes, the idea, about one year ago, in May last year, uh, President Maduro decided to call, to, to propose the, the convening of a, such a constituent assembly. There has been another constituent assembly in Venezuela in 1999, uh, which was at the time when they reworded the constitution. So uh, Maduro said, look, there is a deadlock between the different powers. Let's have a constituent assembly to rework the, 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 the whole system, the, the, the ground rules for, for the Venezuelan political system. And then the thing is that the opposition decided to boycott this election. Uh, at that time, they were in this attempt to organize an insurrection they just uh, described. And they thought that they could remove the government by undemocratic means, by provoking a coup, by calling on uh, military of of officers to carry out the coup and so on. And so they weren't interested in any democratic election, even though their demand was allegedly that there should be elections. So they could have participated in the Constituent Assembly, but they chose not to. Uh, the Constituent Assembly had uh, election, had a massive turnout. People uh, turned out to, to vote in order to deliver a blow against this undemocratic opposition to say, look, we, we are also Venezuelans, we are the majority, and we want uh, a democratic uh, election. So the idea was to have a, a constituent assembly that will, one, represent people directly, i.e. that people could elect their representatives from the neighborhoods, from the peasant communities, and so on, from the different workplaces. And second, the idea was that uh, such an assembly will then have powers to deal with the economic situation. But I have to say that, in my opinion, the Constituent Assembly hasn't fulfilled its uh, role. First of all, uh, the bureaucracy has taken control over it, so there's no real initiatives coming from below. When you say the bureaucracy, was this the PSUV bureaucracy? Yes, the, the bureaucracy at the top of the PSUV, the, the Socialist United uh, Party, and the state bureaucracy that basically have, uh, have asphyxiated the revolutionary initiative of from, from below uh, on many different uh, levels. And secondly, the, national, the Constituent Assembly has been unable or unwilling to take any serious measures to, to deal with the economic uh, situation. In fact, the economic situation has deteriorated um, sharply one, one since, since one year ago uh, and since the election uh, on to the Constituent Assembly on uh, July the 30th last year. Uh, and so people are very disappointed. So now when Maduro comes in this election for, for the elections on, on Sunday and he says, give me 10 million votes and I will fight against the economic mafias that are creating this economic crisis, uh, many people are skeptical. They, they, they say, uh, th this might be the language used by a uh, candidate to the presidency. But you are already the president. If you know how to deal with the economic mafias, why don't you do it now? Why haven't you done it for the last one year or two years or three years? And this is very dangerous because the bureaucracy, the lack of, uh, the, the, lack, the, 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 the inability 
to deal with the economic uh, crisis means that uh, amongst the working class people, amongst the poor, who are the basis of support for the Bolivarian Revolution, skepticism grows, uh, demoralization grows, and uh, so th there might be a, a higher degree of abstention, for instance, in these elections. And this basically prepares the ground for the return of the oligarchy to, to power. Uh, in my opinion, it has to be said, if these policies, the policies of the current government, the government of Maduro, continue, uh, uh, its inability to deal with the economic problems of the country continues, then the right wing will come to power and that will be a real uh, disaster. Yeah, I suppose that fo follows on to what I was going to ask next. It sounds like the current situation in Venezuela, the, exist uh, the, ex uh, the situation that has existed for the last couple of years or so, is one that can't continue the way it's currently doing. You can't have levels of hyperinflation of that nature. I remember learning at school about Weimar Germany, and eventually, um, one way or another, that situation had to be resolved, so to speak. And so you've already started answering what I was going to ask about, well, what exactly is going to happen? But um, kind of apart from that or alongside that, what do you think the tasks for socialists in Venezuela, first of all, are right now and in the, the short to medium term? Mm. Well, I think first of all, we need to ask ourselves, there is a serious, very serious economic crisis in Venezuela. No one uh, is able to deny that. So how, what will be a program that will allow uh, the government to deal with uh, this economic crisis? In my opinion, there are only two ways out of this economic crisis. One is the way that the ruling class, the oligarchy, wants and they will implement if they come to power. Whether they come to power through foreign intervention, military coup, an insurrection or whatever, uh, or they come to power by democratic means, by winning another election, they will implement the following program. There is now in Venezuela a massive fiscal uh, deficit, i.e. the government is spending more than what it's uh, taking in, in uh, revenue, tax revenue, oil revenue and so on. And uh, the government is basically printing money in order to bridge that. That's a cont very important contributing factor to hyperinflation. But there's only two ways of solving this. The, the ruling class wants want to close that gap, the fiscal gap, by cutting expenditure. So they will basically destroy all the social programs, destroy the, the health care program, destroy the university education, uh, privatize all the state-owned state companies. Uh, open up, in inverted commas, PDVSA to foreign investment. Uh, they will carry out a, a massive austerity package in order to make the workers and the poor pay for the price, of the full price of the, of the crisis. The, that's one way of solving the, the economic uh, crisis, one way in which the workers will pay. The other way to solve the economic crisis is basically uh, to nationalize, to expropriate the capitalist class. The capitalist class that's sabotaging the economy, that's funding and creating these uh, undemocratic coup plots and attempting to bring down the government by undemocratic uh, means. They expropriate them, expropriate their properties, the properties, the factories, the food processing uh, places, the land and so on and use this uh, means of production to democratically plan the economy uh, according to the needs of the majority. This is the other way to solve the crisis. Now, the government currently is not following one or the other. It's just following a, a middle-of-the-road solution which doesn't solve anything, which only makes the economic situation worse and prepares the way for the, for the right wing to come to power. So I would say the first thing that socialists need to clarify in Venezuela is which program is needed for the revolution to continue and to be completed, because this is the problem. The revolution was never completed. Uh, that, that will be the first task. The second task is to discuss who's going to carry this program out. And in my opinion, the government uh, of Maduro, which has been in power now for four years or, or more, uh, has proven completely unable to carry out these tasks. It has had many opportunities and every single juncture continues pursuing the same policies and making appeals to the capitalist class to invest in the economy, which they're not doing. And not only appeals, empty appeals, but also giving them concessions, lifting the price controls, giving them cheap loans, creating special economic zones, opening up vast parts of the, of the country for mineral exploitation and so on. 
Uh, and this is very dangerous because this uh, not only does not solve the economic situation, it aggravates it. Uh, even, even the idea that the, the government, for instance, introduces these uh, wage bonuses uh, to top up wages, because obviously wages are now uh, uh, much uh, worth much less than they were, say, a year ago. Uh, but this is not a solution in itself, because the minute the government announces an economic bonus, uh, the prices are already going up and eating, eating away uh, that, uh, that concession. Maduro actually did that, didn't he? He announced a 95% wage increase in advance of the elections. Maybe. On May Day, and that didn't uh, last at all. I mean, the prices in just one or two weeks went up by 100%. So, so that didn't solve the, the situation because uh, you cannot just print money, more money to give to workers when there is no production of, of goods. That, that only uh, adds to hyperinflation. So the, the second question that we need to ask ourselves is who's going to carry out this program? There are many forces in Venezuela within the Bolivarian Revolution that are still attached to the legacy of Hugo Chavez. And Chavez, before he died, he made a couple of very important speeches. One was Golpe de Timon, turn the rudder. And he basically said, the problem here is that we still have a capitalist economy. We call things socialist, um, socialist university or a socialist uh, housing project, whatever, but they're not socialists, they s exist in a capitalist economy. So the first thing that needs to be sort sorted out is the question that we need to move towards a socialist economy, he said. And the second is that we need to destroy, uh, pulverize, I think is the word he used, the bourgeois state, which is still blocking the revolutionary initiative of the people, and create a communal state, a state based on the communes, uh, workers and peasants state. And he was talking about the bureaucracy, he was taking aim at the bureaucracy with that, wasn't he? Yeah, I mean, he was actually, uh, in this turn, the rather speech, he was actually uh, telling off his own uh, ministers for not having carried out uh, what they should have. And um, so what I'm trying to say is that there are still many forces in Venezuela who are loyal to the idea of the Bolivarian Revolution, to the ideals, to, to which is also the democratic participation of people in production, workers' control, uh, peasant uh, communes. Uh, but they're, they're isolated, they are scattered, they're not politically organized at the national level. And I think that uh, there is a need for a revolutionary alternative to come from within the Bolivarian movement, which carries out a socialist program that can deal with the danger of the right wing and imperialism and can also clear from within the ranks of the Bolivarian revolution the bureaucracy, the reformists, which are carrying out policies that prepare a disaster for the Bolivarian revolution. Mm. So I suppose part of your message for this election is that socialists in, in Venezuela are going to have to look beyond it, effectively, to start yes. rebuilding, really, the... Many, many people in Venezuela will, will, in these elections, vote for Maduro. Not so much because they are convinced that his policies are correct. They can see this, that, that the situation is not improving. But they will vote as a way of blocking the right wing and imperialism. Uh, the med imperialist meddling in Venezuela is very important. There are sanctions being implemented mm -hmm. that prevent Venezuela from trading with other countries, that prevent companies from sending money to Venezuelan uh, state-owned companies. And so it's very disruptive. And that's presumably making the economic crisis much worse much for worse. ordinary Venezuelans. That's right? the idea. The idea is to create such an economic chaos that then people will say, we want to get rid of this government. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, so imperialist aggression is very real. It's not it's not government propaganda. As some some may tell you it's very real and very effective, uh, and it's growing. Uh, now, now they're trying. They're even talking about uh, an oil blockade, which will really uh, destroy the the economy. So many people will vote for Maduro, not so much because they're convinced of his program or his ability to solve the situation, but rather as a way of blocking the right wing. Now, we we, in my opinion. Uh, I sympathize with their motives. Uh, there is a, a class instinct. They don't want the right wing to come back to power. But at the same time, I, I will say, I will warn that re-electing Maduro will not solve the situation. Uh, the elections of the Constituent Assembly didn't solve the problem. The regional elections in October didn't solve the problem. Uh, Maduro has had powers enough to deal with the situation if he had a plan uh, for over four or five uh, years. And so the, the, the discussion should concentrate 
not only on what are we going to do on Sunday in the elections, who we're going to vote for or not, uh, but above all on what program is required for completing the revolution and getting out of this economic crisis. And secondly, how to build a revolutionary alternative based on the workers, based on the peasants, in the communes, in the factories and so on, that can carry out that program to, to completion. Follow-up question from that is we've talked about the, the leadership of these movements, we've talked about Corbyn and kind of the Labour Party specifically, but what should socialists in, in Britain and elsewhere outside of Venezuela be doing about what's going on in Venezuela? How, what can we do, basically? Yes. Well, I say our, our main and first task is uh, to fight against imperialism, imperialist aggression in Venezuela, imperialist meddling in Venezuela. This is the main aim of the Hands of Venezuela campaign. Uh, the future of Venezuela should be decided by the people of, of Venezuela without any foreign interference. Uh, we're not just talking about the US, I mean it is also the European Union has implemented sanctions against uh, Venezuela. The British government has received the Venezuelan opposition leaders, the undemocratic Venezuelan opposition leaders were plotting a coup. Uh, and even, even uh, in 2002 when Tony Blair was in power, they gave tacit support to the coup in, uh, in uh, Venezuela. So we must fight against imperialist aggression in Venezuela. This is our first duty as socialists in an imperialist uh, country. And at the same time, try to uh, cut through the fog of lies and half-truths and misinformation that you see in the, in the British media about Venezuela. Uh, this is the best contribution that we can make to, to help the, the Venezuelan revolution, as well as preparing revolution in our own uh, country. Okay, thanks Jorge, and thank you everyone for watching or listening. I hope you've enjoyed the episode. Do tune in next time when we're going to be discussing lessons for the student movement. In the meantime, if you'd like to check out more articles, videos, and other multimedia, then please go on to marxist.com or socialist.net where you can find all sorts of material there. Thank you.